Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Better Love Movement podcast. So I have a special treat for you all. We have entered into the month of February, known as the month of love. And so I am interviewing one of the foremost leading relationship experts out there. Her name is Susan Winter. And oh my gosh, I am super excited for you all to be in on this conversation. So today we are in episode 67 and it is entitled, Where Have All the Good Men Gone? Okay, so we're gonna find out. So Susan Winter is a leading relationship expert and love coach who has helped over 5,000 people find and keep love. Her unique understanding of human nature and romantic relationships has won her over 16 million views and over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Internationally recognized as a thought leader in her field, Susan is a best-selling author of the books Older Women, Younger Men, and Allowing Magnificence, who writes, speaks, and coaches on dating issues, relationship challenges, and personal empowerment. Susan's 400 plus media credits include The Oprah Show, The Today Show, Good Morning America, ABC, CBS, NBC Evening News, CNN, BBC, ITV, Cosmo, Harper's Bazaar, People, New York Magazine, Forbes, Business Insider, The London Times, and The New York Times. In radio, Susan is a frequent guest on NPR, BBC, ABC, and CBS News. Her podcast, The Susan Winter Show, can be heard on iHeartRadio. So welcome, Susan. Anita, thank you. I'm so thrilled to be working with you because we both work on Magnify. And we were just saying before we started uh, chatting here that, uh, that we love that mechanism and you're doing so well. You've got so many clients that adore you. So thank you. It's great to girl power. We unite on this. And That's right. Help That's people right. find and keep love. This is great. It's amazing. And so for all my listeners out there, if you have a dating or relationship question, you really should check out the Magnify app. It is amazing. You get real time advice, video or a telephone call and you pay by the minute. You cannot beat that. So check out Susan Winter on there as well. And Anita. And Anita too. Awesome. So let's jump right into this topic. I get asked this question a lot. Where have all the good men gone? We have seen an erosion of good behavior in general. Mm. So women too, I know we're the ones complaining, but people have forgotten how to be polite. Mm. I think (laughs) this is part and parcel. Uh, There are a couple of things that have compounded this and, and I'd love to get your opinion on this as well. But from my perspective, The more anonymous that we get as far as online dating, the more remote it is. And Mm -hmm. and people feel less need to be uh, truthful and they feel less need to be polite. You know, some 50 years ago, if you knew somebody from the community and you went out on a date with them and then they Mm -hmm. never spoke to you again and ignored you in public, you'd think something was mentally wrong with them. Right. You know, you'd be thinking that they had a serious disorder. Now it's just like, oh, oh, I got ghosted again. So we have seen an increasing, uh, due to social media and due to the onslaught of the online technology, we have had compromised um, behavior as far as civility Mm -hmm. and manners. It's also generational. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think in part the millennial culture views hooking up and dating as a very casual uh, thing, although that's one of the major dominant demographics that I have that want love. So um, men of all age groups have been infected by this millennial virus of, you know, I don't have to be good to her to sleep with her. Mm. Now that I don't have to put a ring on it and I can just hit it, Mm. I think I can pretty much do what I want to do. And hey, it's an open buffet. Swipe, 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 swipe. Oh, I'll see her at eight o'clock. Swipe, swipe, I'll sleep with her at 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. The women have really been put in the back seat and there's nothing empowering about where we are today. No. Unless we really take hold of what we want and create the rules of engagement and lock mm-hmm. those guys in and filter from the very beginning, Anita. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I mean, is that how you teach your clients to go? Exactly. So my tagline is 
vintage love in a modern day world. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's and great. I want to take people back because yeah, yeah. what we're doing is not working. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it really erodes the soul of a woman. Oh, you know? God. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 so here's a pathetic thing that I've heard. People used to come up to me and say, oh, Susan, you'd be so proud of me. I'm learning how to have sex like a man. I'm like, why would you think I am doing that? <laughs> what they're trying to say is, I'm learning to desensitize myself because of the mm. traumatic experience. We don't want you to teach yourself to stop feeling. Right. We want you to filter properly to then allow yourself to feel something good. Right, that's you right. Know? And so shutting down isn't, shutting down is a band-aid for being yeah, hurt, I understand. It is. But we'd like a woman to be fully empowered to feel all of her feelings because then she'll be more in charge of the conversation, how she wants things to go. Exactly, so, yeah. Um, intimacy is very profound for a woman. And although we are in a time period where it's treated very casually, I would really urge all of your female um, uh, listeners to not try to eradicate the most beautiful, precious, and powerful, mm -hmm. nurturing uh, quality that you have. That is the Velcro that will make a man hook onto you. And if you kill that off to try and defend yourself, mm -hmm. we got a better way to tell you how to go. So between yeah. Anita's teaching and, and we're kind of in harmony on this, um, just filter better and be right. very clear on what the rules are for engagement. That's exactly right. I am also a femininity expert, a femininity coach, oh, and wow. I truly believe that it's the woman's feminine energy that is her power. And so mm -hmm. I really encourage women to lean back more to lean into that feminine side of themselves and to attract a man from that side of herself not go over into that masculine world yeah like, no i'm telling women no 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 <laughs> i'm a little different i'm very direct but i understand what you're saying it's it's a it's a it's terminology mm -hmm. my my way to align with that would be to Never forget the power you have to affect and open a man's heart. Oh, yes. And, and the nurturing, the loving, the sweetness. When men sense, just like we fall for a guy when we sense the crack in his armor, mm -hmm. men fall for a woman in the moment when she puts her head on his shoulder. Right. And he suddenly feels like, oh, oh, you know. And so in that way, the roles are very stable. And right. that's a, a wonderful utilization of the feminine energy. Right. So vulnerability. I teach my ladies to be appropriately vulnerable because that to well, me is just, it's, it's kryptonite to a man. <laughs> define, def I love the combination. Define what you mean by that for me. So it's really important. Um, I teach my ladies that it's really important that they own how they feel and that they can express those feelings to a man in a way that's not full of drama because yeah, yeah. i do believe a man can handle feelings he just can't he doesn't want drama so you've got to own how you feel in any moment and express it and then ask a man what he thinks about it cool well as a therapist you probably know about the flooding right yes the, oh yes <laughs> so, you know I, I think the size of a man's the 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 container for his emotional understanding is the size of like a pea and ours yep. is the size of a walnut yep. so you know it overwhelms them you want to really dismantle a man start crying he'll just he'll go into panic mode <laughs> yep yep that's true that's true so but yeah our ladies are um they're they're in that masculine side of themselves and there is a place for it because we have these energies masculine and feminine and and men and women there is yeah. a place for your masculine energy but i'm really helping them to see the power in their feminine side especially to attract a good healthy yeah. masculine man well let's get let's get back to the title because mm -hmm. first of all i want to encourage your listeners i know I personally know there are good men out there because oh, yeah. my business is half and half. Some, 
one point, I think 2017, I was 80% men. Oh, wow. When, <laughs> it just, it depends, because I don't specify gender or, uh, or anything like that, or even age group. So um, I know that when a man wants a woman, and when he loves her, he will go through fire. He will mm. do anything. He will pay mm. me. He'll try and sort it out. He wants to get it right. It means the world to him. And I do know that men are far more romantic. Mm, I agree. And, uh, I have a little puppy here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, yeah, come here. Come here. Come. Come. Do you want to be on camera? Come. I don't know. I, you, she got dropped off during the middle of our interview here. Okay. So, uh, okay. So cute. This is Nika. The oh, puppy. she so, is so cute. Me too. Um, <laughs> I know that a man, when he goes through a divorce or a separation, takes it much harder than we do because, yep. again, they don't know how to process it and filter it. And I've seen guys pining away for somebody for years. Mm. You can't believe the things. I don't know what these girls are doing. I mean, I got a guy that bought this girl a car and never even kissed her. I, I mean, what? it's like, what? I know. It's like, wow. <laughs> this is not, I mean, when a man goes crazy for a woman, but she was very much... When I think of all these women, mm -hmm. they have a bar. I'm not saying it's a high bar. I'm not saying it's an impossible bar. Mm -hmm. But they have a chute that's very narrow mm -hmm. where a man is to treat them and enter a certain way. And that is why the men whip themselves into shape. Wow. And, and that's sometimes that's needed. We have to have standards. We have to have a way in which we believe we're worth being treated. And I, I think that's right. And I think... So many times, my concern is that women have gone mute early mm. on in the relationship yep. Yep. for fear of being difficult. Oh, he might not like me. Well, you want to be different than the girl he can easily sleep with and dump. You don't want to be that girl because mm. I know that men assess a woman in a matter of minutes, yep. whether she's a keeper or she's a, you know, a throwaway. They just, yep. it's like, this is marriage material, this isn't. This is a good time girl. Right. And if you misrepresent yourself in trying to be cool or relaxed, or I'm chill, I'm not uptight. I had a girlfriend that did this over and over again. She was from Northern California. She goes, oh, I'm cool, I'm Northern Cali, I understand, it's all good. And I thought, why do you do that? And she said, well, I don't want them to feel uptight. And I said, well, what do you want? She said, I want a relationship. I said, you're doing it the wrong way. You're giving them the right. wrong way. You're getting these guys to stay for months on end and they don't even, they didn't mean to stay. So you're so good at this because you're such a great person. Right. Uh, she never knew to position herself in a way that a man would automatically see her as, you know, I'm not looking for something serious. I don't want to break this girl's heart. She's kind of right. nice. I'm going to pass on this one. Wow. Well, my, men, my famous saying to my ladies is be hard to get, but easy to be with. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You got some fabulous, fabulous, fabulous advice. Oh, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> now when we're exclusive and committed, you know, yeah. I'm pretty laid back. I'm pretty easygoing, right. but it takes right. time to get you there. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and you're filtering and you're filtering from the beginning. And this that's isn't right. being up and impossible. And we're not putting a man through hoops and challenges right. on purpose. We're not trying to you know, lower his self-esteem or make it impossible. And what I think to continually um, reroute him if he's going right. in the wrong direction. Like my girlfriend used to get all these, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, dick pics. And oh, I'm like, yep. oh, why are they talking this way to you? Why are See? you even in this? Right. And then I said, I want you to start calling them out. This is, you want a relationship. This is the and, and she did that time and time again. She said, oh, I feel like a school teacher. I said, just do it as an exercise. I yep. want you to do it. I said, we need to start correcting them. And these guys were genuinely, I saw the text message. They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. See? I thought this is what we're supposed to do. Everybody right. does it. I right. didn't want to seem like a really dull, boring, straight, square guy. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't think I was interesting. She's like, I don't need your shirt off. I don't need to see these parts of your body. Right. I haven't gone on a date with you yet. And he's like, I'm so, so sorry. Do you want to do dinner? And he suddenly went, oh, this is a completely different kind of girl. Right. She's a dinner girl. She's not right. a drink at 10 o'clock. That's right. That's right. So what type of mindset does a woman have to have in order to start 
like attracting guys, good guys, and believing that there are good guys out here? It's actually in your, it's in your question. Trust me, if you don't trust me, uh, or, or just listen, there, there are good men out there. I know because I work mm -hmm. with them. And every man has the opportunity to be an even better man mm -hmm. in the hands of a good woman that knows how to bring out his greatness. And that's, that's a whole nother skill set. But remember, women are the rudders. Mm -hmm. You know, your romantic relationship, you know in your own life, a man can bring out the animal in you or he can mm -hmm. bring out beauty in you. And That's I've right. had guys do both. I mean, so it just depends on who we align with. Mm -hmm. I would be exceedingly clear and consistent in your messaging. For those of you that are in marketing, think of this as you are a brand. Ooh, you want I like that. <laughs> You want to dress a certain way. You want to speak a certain way. You want to live a certain lifestyle. And it can't be like, I'm going to present this to him and then pictures on my Facebook with me drunk and throwing up at a party. Yo, with yep. the girls. You can't, you know, it's got to be pick something that is sustainable and right. real. You can be mm. fun, but, you know, showing that, you, you know, you're, don't you want to be the one that he brings home to his family and right. instead of just sees at two o'clock on a Saturday night? Exactly. I so, like that one, that the brand, picture yourself as a brand. I like that. Mm. Well, we have mm. so many business women that don't connect the dots. Right. But when we are, when we are out there, we will have sound bites. Mm -hmm. We will have phrases. We need to have bullet points that clearly define to a man. And I'm all about all the cards on the table right up front. Right. I consider if a man makes it through the first date and actually wants a second date, he's been forewarned. If he sits through the yep. second date and listens to my exposition, I've said all I got to say, now you know what you're in for. Cause I would right. rather you, you dump me and get bored in the beginning. Cause I'm not easy enough or I'm mm -hmm. too difficult or I'm something. Then six months from now, and I actually start to, you know, I'm attached to you, and I think we're going somewhere, and you break my heart. You know, That's right. That. That's right. I so agree. I like to be very clear, and I think in your online profile, you should say, I'm a relationship girl. I'm looking mm. for, I'm interested in exploring the possibility of a partnership. And one thing I would say to each new person that I would meet, I'd say, are you open to the possibility of a relationship? Mm, okay. And so I'm put that very, out there right from the beginning. Specific. I'm very specific about my language. I okay. labor each individual word and I'll repeat sentences over and over again. And I say that because I'm not pinning him down. It doesn't have to be with me. If he tells me I'm not really at that point, I'll say, that's cool. I get yeah. that. I'm not sure I want to do anything else. I think we can have a good chat here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, why don't we compare notes and I'll tell you what I know about women and you can tell me what you know about men. Mm -hmm. but that's where I'm going. So somebody would have to at least have the mindset of doing that. Mm. Another thing is I do monogamy. I don't mm. care if it's old fashioned. I'm not qualifying that. I, I don't need you forever. That's the thing that's a little bit different about me. Right. I don't need you forever. But when you're here, I need you to be here. I don't right. need you to be here in five other places. I don't go right. for that. Mm. So I'm all about trying to ha encourage people to start to narrow the field. Date a wide selection of people to get mm -hmm. your chops up, mm -hmm. to get your languaging and your branding together. But when you're starting to filter, enter into a verbal agreement. Of, you know, I think there's a lot here. What do you think? Mm. If we narrow the field and focus on each other one month, see if we like each other. I'm okay. all about verbal contracts and laying out groundwork. Now, typically men like to do all the, they, they would like to make, they, they thought of it. So sometimes for those of you that are crafty girls, you'll know how to make him think that he's, he's thinking of it. So um, right. but I like to get into negotiations and try things out and do work by agreement so that we're very clear on what we're doing. And that's something that I 100% agree. It's a skill that I'm teaching my, my ladies, my millennial ladies, yeah. that, it, that word that you said, negotiation, because that's, that's kind of unsexy. And I get it that they're thinking love and romance, but we have to have a negotiation. We should both get what we want here. And they're leaving that part out. 
Uh, you know, I just did a big speech at the core club, Love, Money, and Power, and we're mm. now taking it on the road. We're booking 500 seat auditoriums, and it's interesting because the titles are changing, but one of the big components of the conversation is to not be afraid to have these discussions because right. I believe in, in my training, I do what I call a la carte love models. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, I think if we take from the traditional formula and alter the specifics to work for our individual personality and lifestyle, mm -hmm. that we will then be able to present a package that's very realistic for who we are, what, what we're capable of doing and what we want. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like, you know, if you lift up the hood and you're buying a Bentley, you don't want to see a Toyota, I don't know, Camry or something, engine, right. you know what I mean? You want to get what you want to get. Right. So I think that if, if we're very specific and we know what we want, that we can begin to define the parameters because guys don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and we can't, I and mean, I know we'd like them to lead, but sometimes we have to at least kind of put them on the path of mm -hmm. where we'd like them to walk. And, right. and they can walk by our side, but I think, I think somebody has to be clear because this, this like, let's see where it goes thing, that's right. a death knell for a woman. That doesn't no. go anywhere. You could be cycled in with a bunch of girls that he's sleeping with and you're never going to have traction. And then what, are you supposed to wait and shut up and ask him three months later, oh, so where do you think this is going? Right. And then he goes, gee, um, I, I'm not ready to do a relationship. And then he reboots the cycle for another three months with another girl. Exactly. Exactly. We have to know what we want, what we don't want, and what we need. That's it. And, and then I have a technique so that men don't feel bulldozed. Mm-hmm. I like to take an idea and throw it on the table and say, just like I just thought of it, like, well, what would you think if, what would you think if for a period of a couple of weeks, we just try, we just like tell everybody else we're just off the market for a little bit, we're busy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just focus on, try and get a couple dates in a week, go to a movie, have some pizza, hang out, and then get back to each other and say, we like it, we don't like it. Right. What do you think about that? So now he's like, oh, well, uh, well, I guess that'd be okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, so then he feels like he's got an active role to shape it. Yeah. Could you do, would you feel like getting together once or twice a week? Well, I, I, I only do, if Friday's good, well, I, I like Friday's with the boys. Oh, okay, mm. wouldn't that Friday's good for you? I like, super, you want to kind of make that, see if this will work? Mm -hmm. Let's try this. You want to try it next week? This sounds great. I can yeah. make it for you. We can hang out have a little fun, you mm -hmm. know. That's an awesome, and that's an awesome way to, like you said, kind of put it out there, get his thoughts about it, kind of even, and, and if he comes up with, oh, I can do twice a week, that's a great idea. Like, oh, oh that's a great that's idea you have. <laughs> you're so big and strong. Mm. I used to say that to all the guys I'd play golf with. I'd play with golf with senior men. They'd hit a shot, and I'd say, you're so big and strong and they knew yep. it was easy but they they just they love it them. they was, love it yeah that was a really good shot wasn't it you're so cute they i love, love men it. so much and i think that's i tend to skew toward men i i love i understand my women obviously mm -hmm. but um you know i have a soft spot for men because they're not the ogres we make them into be no they're not and i agree with you about um, I believe men deep inside are actually more sensitive than us. They're oh, yeah. more, they're more loyal than us. Men don't <laughs> yes, initiate are. divorce the way women do. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. They, when they're in, they're really in. And when, oh, it yeah. when it doesn't work out, it's like the kid just found out there's no Santa Claus. Right. You would think it's like, my marriage didn't work. I mean, it's, devastating it is it is i, I agree we've had, we've had crushes and i mean i i remember being in love with scott lemay in fourth mm -hmm. grade you know and listening to music on my little record player and dreaming of he didn't even know i was alive i had mm -hmm. crushes on boys every year of my life and and i keep thinking you know we've gone through so many heartaches by the time we're 12. right the guy opens up and starts to like a woman at 22 and then and then it doesn't work out he's devastated for the next 12 years yep <laughs> No, I see it in my practice all the time. Men who come in, they are still processing through the pain of their divorce 10 years prior. 
God. Yeah. So yeah, I tell a lot of women that they don't believe it, but I'm like, no, I see it all the time. So, so tell me what the, what the woman has to do to get ready, to get ready to attract a really great man and a really great love. What does she have to do on her end? I, I think you need to do a, a little bit of um, 15 minutes of setting your goals. Mm. Get it very clear. Ask basic questions. I know this sounds redundant, but you'd be surprised how many people have not done it. One, right. what do I want? Mm. In words that are accurate for what I'm asking for. Two, how would those words vary or be slightly different than the term? One girl used to say to me, I want a lover. I'm like, I know her, so I'm like, you want a lover? Mm -hmm. She was using the wrong term. It sounded modern, and I said, so do you right. want the guy that comes to dinner with your family or the one that uh, calls you up at 10.30 at night and say, right. so? <laughs> so, so I said, so that's called a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very specific. Um, right. I want a boyfriend, I'm not sure I'm ready for marriage, but I want committed, and I like monogamy because I like to give all of my love to one man. And that's mm -hmm. the context where I feel safe and he brings out the best in me. Hook, okay. hook, mate, mate, right? Yeah. So, and then understand I something nobody does is how do you want this to look and feel in the real world? In the right. application, how many days a week do you have to give to it? Do you travel four days out of the week for business? Right. Are Saturday nights your only downtime? And if you see somebody, do you only feel like you're making a connection if it's overnight Saturday night through Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. Do you need a Wednesday date in between? If you can hammer out in your mind how you can function in a relationship, what you can actually commit to, mm -hmm. then you know those talking points. And then you put three categories you want for a man, qualities wise. Mm -hmm. uh, kind, faithful, ethical, whatever. Sure, yeah. And then you just set the dial. You go out into the world and do your business. You don't think about it twice. Okay. Because here's the thing. People are so worried that they're going to be, a, that in order to get the right kind of guy, he's going to come in a package that's just abhorrent to them. Like, oh my mm. God, I can't have sex with that. Right. So you're never going to hook up with somebody that you're physically repulsed by. Exactly. But if you start with those three things, knowing what you want, and then those mm -hmm. three things, like um, a challenge for me is not to date somebody younger. I've done that my whole life. And not okay. to be loved with or partnered with somebody younger in a very mm -hmm. long-term relationship. So mine would be a peer. That's okay. a new challenge for me. Never done it. Not mm -hmm. really attracted to it. But when I see somebody on the street and I see myself looking at a kid in jeans and sneakers, I'm like, <laughs> did that appear, Susan? And it's like, so then my, my little list comes to my head. Uh, it's right. like, is that the guy who's going to pick you up with a colonoscopy? I don't think so. Right, right. He's not. Okay? <laughs> He's the kid who's going to go to a basketball game and tell you, you know, like, oh, I'll see you at the pub at 10 o'clock. And I'm I, like, I don't drink. So I autocorrect my automatic focus. You may be inherently attracted to a kind of bad guy or a look mm -hmm. or a vibe that you've had in your past that you want to eradicate. Mm -hmm. And by having those three active qualities that every guy you see that catches your eye and you go, hmm, is he ethical, right. monogamous, and family oriented? Yeah. No, it doesn't look like it. So then you go, that's a no-go. Right. That's it. I love that. So three, we're going to hammer it down to like three qualities. Yeah. That yes, that we want to focus on. That is so good. And you okay. can always change it. If you find one, you know, and you're like, okay, that's boring. I want humorous, but you know, certainly pick a quality that makes him a keeper. Mm, you know, like okay. faithful or kind hearted or honest. Right. Pick one oh. of those qualities. And it's like, Oh, dude, if you're not that, all the humor in the world and all that, you know, you dress well, that, that, if you're not honest, that, that, that doesn't cut it. Right. Yeah. And I get ladies to stretch a little. Um, I really do. I've been really challenging the ladies that I work with to stretch a little in terms of finding qualities that are beyond a man's looks or what he drives or what his occupation is. Um, there was a really wonderful book that came out written by Tai Tashiro, and he talked about the number one quality we really should be looking for in a partner 
is agreeableness or kind, someone who is kind. And when we're thinking about that, we're thinking about someone who stands for something. He's not a pushover. He's not a doormat, but he is very kind and thoughtful in his approach. If ever he did have to kind of show people his boundaries, he's kind about it. Exactly. So yeah, I've been challenging women, you know, add that to your list. I think we're overlooking that. <laughs> it, uh, I call it inherently good. Yeah. Yes. I, a, yes. a lot of women want, oh, I want a spiritual man. My spiritual life is so important to me. And I've been all over this. Right. There's no SEC. There's nobody judging the spiritual world. You can mm -hmm. say what you want to say. We got no proof of any of it. Right. We, we, we know what we know, but... Uh, the last thing I need is to <laughs> have a guy say, but I didn't cheat. She was my second wife in another mm. time. Mm. You know, <laughs> we, I, I don't need your, your, right. oh, the, the, I was channeled. It was a message. I don't right. need that nonsense. If you find a man who is inherently good mm. and stands as a belief system that would not allow him to be out of right order, right. you got to keep her. That's I don't right. know if you want to call it spiritual. You have your yoga. You have your where you go. He doesn't need to go there. He needs to be a good man by your side. However, That's he right. gets there, right? Right. So right. don't look for somebody inherently. He has to be spiritual because you might miss an inherently good man. That's right. That's right. I know for me, my number one quality is uh, personal growth. I am obsessed wow. with getting better. Well, and they would get you otherwise. Right. And I need a partner who feels that same way. They are obsessed with just being their best. That is so hot. <laughs> oh, no, you're looking for it. You're a power couple. Yeah. Yeah. I you, need you, to grow. You, you, that would turn you on, right? A oh, power couple. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, so all the ladies out there, I know you all have your thing, maybe your two or three things. I want you to really think about those, drill down on it, because you have got to be clear. As she said, you're the rudder in this. You're going to kind of, you know, guide and direct how this thing goes. So you've got to know what you want and where you want to go. And don't be afraid of that. I hear so many ladies that say, well, if I tell him I'm interested in a relationship on the first date or I want to get married one day, I'm like, yeah, if that's what you want. Get rid of him right away. If it scares him, he's so far from that, you will just get heartache. It's guaranteed heartache because guys don't change their, you know, they're, we all hear stories about the one guy I didn't mean to. I went out with her. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't right. want anything. Um, I've got a girlfriend married down the street, seven mm. years. The first, wow. They all bring me on their first date. And the guy's like, I'm not looking for anything. I'm just looking to get laid. And But she played it differently. She always knew what she wanted. She gave him a lot of latitude. Mm. And she did it a little bit differently. But generally speaking, she got lucky. But that's the exception, not the rule. That's generally right. speaking, it's easier to start with people that already want what you want. That's right. That's it. I agree. <laughs> so yeah, like, like who likes you and, you know, ha be with someone who wants what you want. And I've got a very simple equation. You're looking for someone who wants what you want and they want mm -hmm. it with you. That's, that's right. It. That's it. That, oh, I, that's it. So we are good. That right there sums up so much of what I tell my ladies. That is it right there. It is super important that we embody that. So Susan, tell us what you've been up to lately. If you have something you want to promote on today's show, tell our listeners about. Um, I have been, I was doing private speaking gigs where I couldn't invite people. Mm -hmm. And now it looks as though um, I will be in New York City throughout this spring season doing Love Power and happiness. Mm. Uh, one is at uh, Sony Hall on April 12th, but I'll keep you uh, posted on all that. And that's, uh, there'll be 500 seats there. Mm -hmm. So as I get booked into new venues that are public spaces, I can let people know about that. And um, other than that, I just, I love doing my YouTube channel. If you oh, yeah. want to check out Susan Winter uh, on YouTube. I've got over 400 videos. I'm kind of a prolific worker. Mm. Love to have you join me on social media and chat me up. I'm Susan E. Winter on Instagram. I've got a website, susanwinter.net. I got there late. 
I didn't, I didn't plan this as a career. This just kind of happened. This wow. is a very recent thing in the last, you know, 10 or so years. I just, I didn't know what I was doing. I never set out to make money. I never, I just wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do what I was doing. So um, I just, I just really appreciate venues like this, Anita, where I get to yeah. know you and meet you and work with colleagues that are like-minded and seriously intent upon helping everybody be happier and have less yeah. emotional pain. That's yes. a beautiful thing. And that has always been my goal. You know, I've shared my personal story with my listeners about, you know, the struggles I've had with love. And so when I see it, my heart goes out. I know that men and women alike, you know, they want to find their person and they want to find the best fit for them and they want to be happy. So yes. if I can help with that, I mean, it's a home run. Well, you're terrific. And I just, I'm so proud of all the work you've been doing on Magnify and you have such a good reputation there. So um, your, your clients are in very good hands. Thank you. So. Now, I have given you some great information in today's episode. I hope you all were listening, that you took notes. I want you to head over to Magnify, M-A-G-N-I-F-I. -I. I want you to check out Susan Winter, and you can speak directly to her. You can see her schedule on there. It's amazing. I want you to check out her YouTube channel. I've watched many, many, many videos over there. I've checked those out. Um, social media, you know how we do it. I want you to go and follow her on social media. Get your content. Help yourself. Help your relationships. Help your dating life. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, please do so today. And I would so appreciate your five-star review. You may check me out over at betterlovemovement.com. I have new products that are landing on February 1st. I just got a chance to talk to the website developer. She's putting up all the new products on Friday, just in time for February 1st for Valentine's, which is coming up. And also check out the event. We have a live singles event happening in Richmond, Virginia. It's called the Valentine's Day Lock and Key Singles Event. It is on February 15th, 2020 from 6 to 8 o'clock p.m. Head on over to Eventbrite and get your tickets now. Thank you so much, Susan, for being Anita, on the show. Thank you. We're stereo. I love this. Yes. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your incredible success and good work. Thank you. Take care now. Thank you everyone for listening and as always, stay open to love.